Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Garage Bouillon and to another episode on my 924 Safari. So in the previous episode, right as I was busy preparing to install the dashboard, I discovered a pinhole size of rust right down there in the passenger footwell. After some digging by my body shop, that pinhole turned into something more the size of a fist. And after even some more digging, they realized that the inner sill was completely damaged and they had to rebuild all of that. So that's now all been rebuilt. It's looking really good. It's um, You're always going to see there was bodywork. I told them there's no reason to hide it. I'd rather have an honest car than a car that's hiding its, its history. There's been a patch that's been installed both on the inside of the car and on the outside. So that's now done. So all the rust on this car has been addressed because they did a double check on everything to make sure there's nothing else. And they didn't find any rust anywhere else. So in the previous episode, I left you hanging with a new dashboard not going in. That dashboard is nicely packed back into its box over there. If you have a look here, you will see that I also have a brand new windscreen fitted. And for those of you that are familiar with how 94 windscreens work, you will notice that this is not a 94 windscreen, but this is a 944 Type 2 windscreen, which means it's flush fit. And it's looking really, 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 really good. And it makes the car a whole lot more modern looking. Um, combined with all the new rubbers that I've got, this car pretty much looks brand new. In this episode, I'm probably not going to install the dash because I am now completed with all my painting. If you go down here, you'll see that I've got the black down there. And you'll also see in here, it's now been painted black. And even down here by the bumper. It has been painted black, which means this car is now exactly the way it needs to be. So the dashboard will have to wait for another episode. And what I'm going to be doing in this episode is I'm going to try to get this car watertight. So the only thing left is this gaping hole over here and these holes over here where the mirror goes. And if all of that is filled up, then it means this car is watertight. The reason I want it watertight is because look at the state of this paint. It's been in a body shop for three months, so it's full of dust and I really want to clean it. And the reason I want to clean the car is because I also have decals that I need to install. And for me to do that, I need a clean car. So we're going to install the headliner. I'm going to install the rear quarter panels on the inside. We're going to install these windows. I will also get the tank flap installed. Um, the wing mirrors will be installed. So that's pretty much what I have planned for this episode. So let's see where I get stuck and what curveballs this car throws at me. But that's the plan. So sit back, relax, and let's start working. Six months later and we're back it's been six months i know i haven't forgotten about this car i have been working on it off and on but i'm starting to work on it again i have done quite a few things and quite a few things that were quite difficult to achieve on this car has now been completed i'm going to give you a bit of a whirlwind update so that you know where i am at and um, I'll also talk to you through the things that still needs to happen because there's a few things that I still need to solve. But let's start. So the first thing that you might notice is that I have the mirrors on. They are in there. They are functioning. The same goes for that side. They, they are on. I have now fully aligned the hatch. So this is working properly. Replace the struts because the ones I had were aftermarket. They were too strong. So these are original Porsche and they cost an arm and a leg compared to what you can get for the uh, aftermarket stuff. But most of the work I've done is actually on the inside of the car. So let me take you through. Oh yeah, one more thing I missed is the fact that I have new side glass. Again, this is the same green tinted 944 glass as what I put in there. New rubbers, new trim. So it looks really, really good. And then the next thing is inside the car. So let me just open that up. Oh, okay, that cleared. There you go. Pasha door cards. So these are the original door cards that I sent away and had refurbished. It's not the best job. I was expecting them to strengthen the back of this door a lot more. I had to actually do this afterwards with fiberglass. Um, but they are now nice and straight, nice and strong. 
Um, and this is the same Pasha as I have on the seat. So that looks really, really, really good. As you see, I still don't have a dashboard in there. And I promised you guys I will do a video of installing a dashboard. So that's coming in the next episode. Uh, but what I spend most of my time on is this. If you guys can have a look in here, you can see that I've installed a new headlining. Um, well, new. This is a second-hand headlining. I couldn't get them new anymore. And I wanted the original Porsche vinyl. So this one comes out of a 944 that someone took apart for me. That took forever to get in. Um, you'll see at the back there, I've got the quarter panels installed. These come from a 1984 944 as well. Um, seat belts are in, as you can see. So everything on the inside is now done. And let me take you through to the engine bay because there's been some work done there as well. And if we come here, you can see I've installed sound deadening and I have got a new reservoir in here. So you'll see I'm replacing all of the worn out bolts and nuts with brand new yellow passivated hardware. Here, over here and there, everywhere where I find it, I'm replacing it with new stuff. I am installing OEM hoses for the wiper system. I've only done this bit, the rest still actually has to happen. The bonnet still has to be plumbed as well, but that'll happen when I get some more time. And I have installed new stickers here here and here and i think that is about it and what i'm about to embark on now is to install the lights i've actually bought new lights smaller ones the ones i had which are these ones are way too big for the car so i've just bought i think these are rally 2000s or something they're about you can see it's about a hand a little bit slower than a hand. I think they'll fit much nicer. I've got two on the top that's going in and two on the bottom that's going in. So it should have a nice look, I hope. And I also have to still wire the antenna. That's gonna be a bit of a job, which I don't quite have the courage for yet because I need to drill a hole right there. And I also need to drill a hole into the body. So um, that needs to happen still. Once that is done, I'll take the car outside because you can see it's still very dirty from the body shop. And then I'll give it a proper wash so that all of this gunk is off. Once that is done, I've got some decals up there that's going to go on the side. Yeah, so lots of things still need to happen. Most of them are small and detailed. But I think what I'm going to do now is to wire the spotlights and the fog lights. All right, so this set came with the Hella Spotlights. I actually ordered it as a kit that I can easily wire in. Um, you can see there's a fairly standard relay on here and then there's a whole bunch of wiring. I think the black one is for the uh, switching. Um, the rest is ground, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm not sure if I'll need all of them, but we'll figure it out. Um, what I am going to do is there's a modern fuse in here, which I don't like. I don't want to add a modern fuse and something that says fuse as big as that onto my car. So I'm going to retrofit this to be a ceramic fuse. I know that's probably less efficient, but that's the way I like it. So that's going to happen. Um, and I also need to modify this harness anyway, because um, I spent ages in the car trying to fit this inside the car. And now I've given up. Uh, because I just can't find a good spot. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to install it onto here. So the red wire is going to go through this hole down there over the bulkhead. And then I'm going to bring it in to this area here where I have a brand new painted bracket for my airbox. And the two relays will be bolted onto here, which means my wiring will be running here and then across here. You probably will not see it, but I need to double check if I can hide the relay underneath this box or if there isn't enough space. Um, if that doesn't work, um, I need to find another spot for the relays and I'm not quite sure where. But the idea is the relays come in here. I already have some butchered wiring on the headlights here, which means I can open this up, probably redo it, get it better, and then tap off my uh, switching information from here for the spotlight. So my 
uh, brights or my driving lights will trigger the spots that are on top here. So for the fog lights, I'll need a switching wire that goes through this hole here in the bulkhead. And then I'll be putting a switch into the center console between the seats uh, to trigger the fog lights. But for now, I'm gonna quickly screw in the relays and see if it fouls the cover of the airbox. Alright, so the good news is my bracket looks amazing. The bad news is the relay won't fit there, which means I need to keep looking for a spot. Um, and that's getting increasingly difficult because I can't do it here. There's not enough space here. Um, and I can't do it here unless I do one here and one here, which might still be an option. But not quite the look I'm going for. Um, the other option is I do something with this and try and build a bracket. Maybe I can do that, I don't know. Um, time to think again. Many, many minutes later. Right, so we know that doesn't work. I actually tried this one. I found a hole here, which I thought might work. I even tried that one. I considered the earth point down there. But I think in the end, I've just got this uh, tacked in there with masking tape, but I think in the end, this is the spot where I need to have them. I'll try and have them symmetrical. Um, so this guy will, whoop. So this wire loom will come out there. There's another one exactly like that that'll come out there as well. Uh, most of the wires will go back through here following this guy. I'll wrap them in, uh, in tape so you won't see them. They'll go in through there, over here, some into the battery, some of them into the bulkhead. And then some of them will go down through the car, I think through one of these holes down there. And they will then pop out at the bumper and feed the lights. I think that's going to be the best solution for now. Um, I don't want to drill holes in the car. That's why I'm struggling. Otherwise, I would have just popped the hole in there. But I have experience of drilling holes in these things. They tend to rust where you drill the hole. So I do not want to do that. So if there's not an existing hole I can use, I'm going to do it with double-sided tape. I'm going to cut off these tabs off of these relays, and I'm going to put some double-sided tape at the back of these when I'm ready to mount them, and they're going to just be mounted straight here, nice and flush. Um, I think that's the solution. So for now, what I need to do is I need to extend the red cable so we can get to there, because as it is, it's too short. Um, I'm still debating where I put the fuse box. Um, yeah, things to consider. All right, so what I've done now is I've made a wire and I've wrapped it in butyl tape. Uh, two live wires coming directly from the battery. So I'm gonna get that through the bulkhead and then I'm gonna route it along here. And then I need to figure out how I'm going to hook it up to the rest of the wire harness. so now i have the little wiring harness sitting here um it'll go onto the battery over there it's coming through the uh, bulkhead right there the firewall bulkhead whatever you want to call it and i've got it uh, with tie wraps i'll cut this off just now but it's running behind the distributor all the way across there and then what i've done is i've brought it out along the wiring harness just down here. And as you can see, this here is a fuse box that normally goes in the engine bay of a 911. And as luck would have it, let me just open that up for you. It has two fuses in it, exactly what I need. So what I will now do is I will install this guy up here, somewhere like that which leaves room for the water to flow that it won't actually interfere with my fuse box. Then the wires, you can see I've already got them connected up, will run across this little valley and then into here, down into where the relays are currently lying. So what I need to do now is wire these two blue wires into the same ground as I'm using for the headlights itself. That then leaves me with two blacks and two yellow wires that needs to be wired up. The black wire is the power wire for the 
uh, lights. So that'll get the lights to pop on. And the yellow wires, these are trigger wires. So the, what's going to happen is for the spots, the yellow wire is going to be wired onto my bright. And for the fogs, I have a green wire. The green wire will be wired up to the uh, low beams. That green wire will go back through the bulkhead there, into the cabin, into a switch, and back will come a yellow wire that'll trigger this guy to say switch on the fog lights. So once I have all these wires connected to the lights and I've got them cut to size, I'll start wrapping this harness again so that it looks like what I've done back there. Um, and um, I think then we are ready to install the lights. Alright, so I've got the yellow line going backwards, which is good, so that's for the fog lights. Um, I've got this yellow line, this needs to be hooked up to one of these wires down here, but you'll see I've also cut through all three of them, so now I've got these loose little pigtails, and I've also got them on the chassis. I've got the blue ones hooked up to uh, earth right there. So what I need to do now is hook the yellow wire up to one of these two. I'm not sure which one, I'll figure out. I'm hoping it's the yellow one because that'll match nicely. And then I'll hook the green one up to the other one. Um, the green one has to follow with this yellow one going into the car and that'll form a little wiring harness on its own. But I'm still struggling with the neatness of it all and I don't really like the idea of using double-sided tape here. It just doesn't feel right. The factory never would have done that. So um, I was playing around some more and I figured out I can still use these two holes. And I've done some cardboard aided design. And if I now drop this guy down there like that, something like this, you'll see it matches nicely with this thing. Then, let me just grab one that I can get you. Sorry, I'm doing this one-handed now. But then these relays can be nicely bolted into here. That'll look a lot more factory than uh, my original plan. So I'm off to the hardware store. I'm going to buy a piece of flat steel that I can shape to this size and drill the holes. And I'll paint it up. And then we will resume this work. Luckily, I don't have a deadline on this car. Otherwise, um, I would have been in trouble a long, long time ago. Many unbearable hours later. All right, so it's been about two weeks, to be honest. And um, I really went into a rabbit hole on this bracket thing. I learned how to design brackets on Fusion 360. I found companies that can laser cut me brackets. I did all kinds of stuff. Uh, and then I spoke to a friend of mine and I said to him, I can't figure out how to do this. And he said, well, why don't you just put them inside the car? And I was like, well, I tried that. And then I realized my biggest worry when I was inside the car is because I couldn't find a reliable uh, power cable that comes directly from the battery. But I can honestly just pull one from there, push it through the bulkhead, and my problem is solved, which means I don't have the issue or the worry that these guys will get wet because I was thinking about putting booties on them. How do I get them dry? Sort of the same solution as Porsche has on the headlight motor there. So I was really deep down a rabbit hole. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reverse all this work. I'm going to take the relays out from here. I'm going to put them into the car. I've got some cables that I can extend if I need to. But in essence, the relays are going to be where the relays are in the car. That means they'll be dry. They'll be safe. Um, I'll pull a wire from the battery into the bulkhead here and then I'll have wires coming out and then they don't have to run over this valley here. They can all run neatly underneath the fender and come into the headlights here. So I've still got my pigtails. This solution still stays intact and I'll show you how I do that. But for now, let's go inside the car. Let's find a spot. Let's get the wiring through the car. All right, so um, I'm making progress. It's really slow. I'm really overthinking. This is not my strong suit, so forgive me for um, not filming everything because it's difficult to film and think at the same time. But this has been cleaned up. The earth has been cleaned up. It's got new uh, screws through it on both sides. And I've now wrapped this wiring harness because I couldn't get a sheath that goes over it properly. So it's now wrapped, it's been plugged back in. And those pigtails that I had have now resulted in this little solution of piggybacks that sticks out through the wrapping. 
one is for the dims and one is for the brights and so one of these will go to power the spots and one of these will go to power the fogs i've also already pulled the black and the green wire through the firewall there you can see i've got a screwdriver that's just holding uh, open the rubber for me so the green and the black wire this will be used for the fog so the green wire has to then go onto one of these little piggybacks i'm not sure which one i'll figure out as soon as i switch on the headlights then I can see where the power is. The black one actually goes to the lights themselves. All right, so I bought this cable sheathing and uh, it's been very difficult to get the cables through it. But what I've now done, it's an old trick that you use for houses as well, but uh, I used some tape. I taped all four of the cables so you can now see. I have a yellow, a green, a black, and a black. So the yellow goes for the spots, the green is for the fogs, and the two blacks are the power wires coming back individually again for the, for the fogs and the spots. I've now pulled them through the sheath, and that is going to go into there, or just to join close up to the firewall there, which makes this nice and tidy, so you won't see the cables. You can see that this now has the ability to run down to there, looking all nice and factory and tidy. Um, I've redone the one from, from the battery. You can see that's also running in a sheath. So it now looks like it's OEM. Um, so my next job is, now that I've got this cable through the sheathing, is to push the yellow and the other black cable through the uh, firewall. And then I have all the wire roughly in the spot where it needs to be. Then it's just a matter of hooking up the switch and the relay. And we should be able to start testing. So I now have the relays wired in. This is the spots and back here behind the pedal is the fogs. I just need to find a way of labeling them. I'll figure that out in a couple of seconds. The next step for me is to take these two wires, the yellow and the green, and to put a switch in between them, which I will do now. And then that switch should allow us to trigger the fog lights when the headlights are on. All right. You know, you know, you know. Unfortunately, I don't have the right crimps uh, for the small one. I'll have to order them. But for now, I can just use what I've got. I have made more progress today than I have made in about two months. Sometimes you just have to figure things out. And once you figure it out, it's quick. That works. And now we can wire up this little switch. Bought this brand new, so it looks original. Okay, so um, now we move to the front of the car, get some power to this setup and see if we can make it work. All right, so now that I have the inside fairly buttoned up, the next thing for me to do is to start hooking up the lights and to just finalize this last piece of the wiring harness. As you remember, the yellow is for the spots and the green is for the fogs that has to go into those pigtails over here i've got one of my spotlights and i have one of my fog lights and you can see they also have two pigtails uh, blue for earth and black for power so i'll have to hook those guys up um, luckily this wiring harness that i received actually splits into two pieces so it easily feeds both those lights i have also connected my wiring harness to the battery i've swapped the terminals from this side to that side because that just works a little bit better so that's done 
Right, so what I've got to do now is I've got to remove this front bumper again. Um, that means disconnecting the lights on both sides as well. And I also push the wiring harness so it gets to that area of the car. So let's get started on that. So the bumper is now done you can see i've got the brackets down here for the fog lights and i've got the brackets up here for the spotlights and i used what i could find that's as closest to a straight edge as i can get because i want them obviously to be parallel as i install them you can still move them around when they're installed but i wanted to do it now and then i don't scratch the paint as much so these are on the next thing for me to do now is to just finish off this wiring loom so i need to put some spade connectors onto the yellow and the green line and I need to put some sheathing on and I need to put some heat shrink on, just get it nice and tight. And then once that is done, we can start hooking up the lights again. All right, so I think I'm now finally done with the harness. So let me show you what I've got. I've got these connectors going on to the one side. This is the power. And I've got the same on this side going to power. Then I have made these guys for the earth. And I'm not quite sure exactly where I'll pull earth from yet. I can put it from down there somewhere. Or I can just put it onto the bumper bracket, which might be the best spot. So I've done that. I've got that ready. And I also have made this. So um, I have unwrapped my work here again. I didn't quite like what I did. So this guy will go onto these wires like that so that the other wiring harness can easily plug into it and that there's enough movement for this headlight to come up and down. So um, I'm now at the point where I'm going to turn on the ignition again so that I can test which one of these wires, the white one or the yellow one, is the dims and the brights because once i know which ones is dims and brights i'll know which way around to put this little uh, uh, extension and then i can hook up the rest of the cables to the wiring harness hook the lights up and then we are done all right here goes nothing i can hear the pump priming and the headlights are on so that means all this stuff is working the way it was before. So I just now need to figure out which one of these two wires is giving me power. So I'm going to get my multimeter and then we'll have a look. All right, so let's see if we can find which one is getting power. That's getting 0,1. Which is not ideal, but at least um, it's not 12. And this guy here is getting 9,5, which it gets great to 12. My battery is not fully charged anymore. Right, so that means that the yellow is the dims and the white is the brights. So let's wire that up. All right, so that's the bumper ready. Um, you see, you can see I have put on slide connectors. I have put on some heat shrink. I've put on some sheathing and also again, some heat shrink here. 
this will hide that blue wire really nicely which i hate so much uh, but it also just tidies up the whole look of the thing i don't want two wires running down my bumper so this looks nice and original so i've got four of them set up now the alignment is not great anymore i had to play with the brackets a little bit they quite fiddly uh, but anyway we've got them in now so the next step for me to do is to get this back on the car And there we go bumper is on and i think this looks really 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 cool so i'm pretty sure you guys want to see this uh working so i'll set you up and i'll go test the lights Looking up the power headlights fog lights Driving lights. And there we go. It's working. It looks really, really good. And I know that for some of you, this might just be an afternoon's work. But for me, this really was about two months worth of thinking, overthinking, redoing, retrying, redoing, retrying. But I'm really happy with the end result. I think I've managed to hide all the cables in a way that it looks like it's factory, which was always my goal with this car. I wanted to look like it came out of the factory as the spec. Um... But that's also where I'm going to end this episode. I think you guys have been waiting long enough. Uh, in the next episode, we will be installing the dashboard. I will be installing the antenna, which I'll have to drill holes into the body for. And I'll do the wash and the wipe system. And then I think we are pretty much ready to pull the car outside. I'll give it a good wash. And then we need to start doing decals, but I think that'll happen later because in six days time, this car has a roadworthiness. So I'm going to focus on the things it needs to get through roadworthiness. So join me next time. And uh, until then, goodbye.